Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give some love to Ricky and James this evening. Thank you. There's also applause for the truth of what they sang. Well, good evening, everyone. So tonight, <clears throat> I was thinking about what to talk about. So, of course, I go to the Lord and I say, Lord, what do you want me to share? So I heard the word pray, pray to him. Okay. So I go to prayer. I'm praying about it, I'm praying about it, praying about it. I let a day go past. I'm like, yeah, okay. Lord, what do you want me to talk about? He said, you need to pray. Okay, so I pray about it. Pray about it. Lord, what do you got? What do you want me to say? I want you to pray. Okay. Pray about it. Pray about it. Figured it out. Guess what I'm supposed to talk about? Yes, you guys are on it. You're not asleep. So I'm going to talk about prayer. I'm going to talk about a certain perspective of prayer. That's prayer life and what that might look like. So um, all of you being hopefully obedient followers of Christ, um, I'm sure you are sharing the gospel with people and you might come across somebody that has um, shared with you that they don't believe who Jesus says he is. However, well, unfortunately, I as well have met too many of those people, but however, this same people, I, I, re I realize as, at the same time, believe that evil exists, that the devil is who he says he is. Um, so I'd like to follow up with them and tactfully say, well, you know what? In my belief as a Christian, as I understand it, the devil thinks and knows Jesus is who he says he is. So let me pause right there for a minute and ask this question. Who has, a few years back, seen the, the movie War Room? Remember that? Okay. Who went home, those that raised your hands, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, who went home after that movie and made themselves a war room? A couple of you? No? No? Okay. So it, the next question is irrelevant. <laughs> I was going to say, who still uses that war room uh, on a daily basis? Well, our scripture tonight is related to the subject. It's found in Matthew 6, verse 6, and it says this, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So unpausing, I was, um, what I was saying earlier, several accounts in scripture tells us that the devil does believe that Jesus is Lord. He knows the truth of Jesus of being the savior of the world, but he shudders at his name. He despises him. And you know, the devil doesn't even really care that we know the same truth. He doesn't care that we think who Jesus is. But what he doesn't want us to do, he doesn't want us to follow him. He doesn't want us to worship him. And he doesn't want us to be dependent on him. So this past Sunday, we sang a song in modern worship um, called Raise a Hallelujah. Uh, for those that were here, you might remember that. It speaks about worship being a weapon against the enemy. Prayer is also a form of worship, of course, so prayer is also a weapon against the enemy. You see, Scripture also tells us several times, but including in James, the book of James, it says, submit, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. When we enter our war room, we go to battle against the enemy by being in prayer. Being in prayer with God is how we fight our battles. God said this in two chronicles, I'm going way back, uh, somebody by the name of Jehoshaphat, if you remember that, after he had cried out to the Lord, he said this, oh God, we are powerless, help us. 
And God responded to him by saying, fear not, the battle is mine. So this is also what the Bible means when we read in Ephesians, if you remember this verse, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. So I'm going to talk about his schemes here in a second, but what is the full armor of God exactly? Reading the word, um, praise and worship, being in prayer, that's all putting on the armor of God, staying in that. So one of the most important things that we can know is why does God allow the devil to have the power that he does? Well, scripture is flooded with a lot of that. But what we know and trust is that through all of this, through all of what we read in scripture, that God can use anyone and anything to draw us closer to him. See, um, the devil is really, really good at putting good things in our way to keep us from praying. Not necessarily sin, even though we do fall short of the glory of God, it's not always sin that keeps us from praying. The quest for righteousness can keep us from praying. Legalism, if you know what that is, can keep us from praying. The devil can trick us to think if we keep busy with these good things, we don't remember to pray or even have time or even think that we need to. So we can't forget that he is the master deceiver. He is the master manipulator. He is so good at it that sometimes even we don't even recognize it through the good works that we're doing. We could be so busy doing things, it keeps us preoccupied, task after task after task, works after works after works. We say to ourselves, but it's for the community, it's for the church, it's for the Lord, it's for the kingdom. See, those things are awesome, but when it consumes us so much that we don't have time for a prayer life or a personal relationship with God or going deeper, in our relationship with God, it's contradictory. Um, the devil doesn't want us to pray for things that honor and glorify Jesus. He does, however, he does not care if we ask God for certain things like good health or food or clothing or success. The reason is, is because the, the devil is just fine with that is that expresses desires that we share with people who are not born again. You don't have to be born again to want those things. You don't have to be born again to ask God to provide them. See, here's, here's, here's the deal. We should never settle for a definition of faith that requires only what the devil himself can do. So... We should not leave our prayer time to chance, to try and somehow fit it in our day. If we don't have consistent set time each day to pray, we never may get to it. Here's the thing, too. The devil defeats most praying before it happens because we didn't make a plan. Authentic prayer is not another duty for the schedule, an obligation, a task to mark off the calendar. The only way we should look at prayer as a duty is if we look at it in the same way that maybe a, a scuba diver puts on his tank before going underwater. That would be a good idea, right? Um, same way that a soldier would prepare his coordinates for battle, or when a pilot prepares for a flight, or the way a diabetic takes his insulin, or even the way that Pooh Bear looks for honey. God has given us such an incredible means of grace through prayer. And here is the final bottom line. If we don't eat, we starve. If we don't drink, we dehydrate. 
If we don't exercise a muscle, it atrophies. If we don't breathe, we suffocate. And if we don't pray, we struggle. We stay in the battle. And just as there is physical means of life, there are spiritual means of grace through prayer. So let's do that now. Let's go to the Lord. Lord, we are invited by your promises to come to you with all our burdens and battles. Draw us by the power of your spirit to ignite our hearts to be consistent in our communion with you. May we grow to be persistent in prayer until Christ is the pulse of our hearts, the spokesman of our lips, and the center of all of our hopes and desires. Continue to prompt and nudge us to constantly go deeper in our relationship with you. In your awesome name we pray. Amen.